Hello, my friends. I am back again. Welcome to days 48 and 49 of our 66 Days of Data with Nime live stream challenge. Yes, I've been off for a few days, but I'm back. And from now onwards, we're going to do double features every single day until we reach the magic number of 66. So before we do anything, let me just quickly show you what we're going to create today. And then we have some announcements. So let me just switch this one over here. And that we can go here. And then we switch to our trusted application within a NIME. You already know this workflow. And as always, you can find it on the NIME hub. But let me just quickly show you what we're going to create. So let's just right click on the time plot. And you know, may, may remember that we have um, basically made this stuff here um, uh, dynamic, meaning if we select 10, then it is 10. And the, uh, the, the, the years here are also dynamic. But what we have added new is the artists over time, which you can see here. So you see the years here and basically how many songs each artist has created over the years that were selected. And we also have the number of tracks per year. And as always, this stuff is quite interactive. So we can look at the singular views here. All right, now let's get back to the main screen. So um, just a moment. All right, so um, maybe a few announcements here. Some things I'd like to mention. You might remember that I will be visiting the NIME Summit on happening uh, from November 14th until 16th. And I will be live streaming from there. I also have a blog post now live, which you can find on the NIME blog where I share my reasons for to be present. Oh, wait a minute, four, like this. Four reasons why you should use NIME and why you should attend the summit because that's a really special event. And besides meeting nice people, you get great training. Networking is outstanding there. It's very inspiring. A lot of other tools. So make sure if you are there to stop by and say hello. So with that said, let's just switch back here. Um, let's just dive into the workflow and see what we have done. So today we are going to cover basically the line plot and the stacked area chart. All right. So I guess you remember we have been around here for some time, right? We have the top 10 selector here and we have this table view. Then we basically wanted to create a line chart. So let me just quickly show you. The output here is a list of the artists. What we want to do basically is we want to filter um, the main table, this one here with 12,000 rows only um for for the um for the top 10 selected artists here so we basically first use a column filter where we just keep the artist's name and for the bottom input it's so to say the library file if you want so that's our reference document that we're looking at and then of course we have the main table that comes here from the rule based row filter through the joiner and basically what it does uh, is it basically keeps only those artists. We have a um, we have basically an inner join, so we only have matches where we have basically the artist name from the main table is also found in the reference table. And as a column selection, we do not keep anything from the reference table because it only holds our artist table but we keep year, artist name, and number of tracks. And if you remember previously in that rule-based row filter, we already have limited our overall data set to just the years selected. So now that we have only here and after this joiner, we only have the artists with the correct years 
and the correct artists, namely our top 10 artists, we want to prepare a line plot. And in Nime, quite often, and that's something I also had to learn, in Nime, something what you need to quite often do before creating a line plot is that you do some pivoting. So I pivot the number of tracks by artists and years. So the groups are the years, the pivot points, so the ones where we basically have as column headings, turn the data by 90 degrees, are the artist's names, and the manual aggregation is the sum of the number of tracks. This gives us a nice little table that just looks like this. We have the years here, and here we have these 10, um, 10 uh, artists. And you see it from also columns 11. Yes, because we also have the year column here. So we have these. And one thing you also see is some artists have not been active in some years. And hence, we have some missing values. This is per se nothing bad in Nime. We just have to deal with it. And that's what we do in the next, um, next note, which is basically the missing value note. And there we just say, for any number that you find, please... Um, replace the missing value with a zero. So the outlook or the result looks pretty much like this. Now we don't have these red question marks anymore. We only have zeros for them. What we then do is we need to correct the headers because if you just look at the table, um, after pivoting, you always have like the pivot point plus the aggregation method and uh, which column was aggregated. So we want to get rid everything after the name. If we just look for edit for the best band in the world for Queen, let's just go here. You see Queen plus sum of the number of tracks. So we want to get rid of that. So what we basically do is we extract the column header and I just leave the prefix um, empty here. And what that does, it basically only gets me the column headers into a data table and now this is something I can work with. Then I transpose it, meaning I um, pivot it by 90 degrees um, and there are not very many options I can do. So let's just execute this. So if you look at the table here, you see it here in a horizontal format. If I transpose it, I now have it vertically. And now I can go through them in string manipulation. So what I basically do is I just say, Wherever I find in the column header, in the column named column header, wherever I find this plus some number of tracks, replace it with nothing and append it as a new column because I will use an insert column header node after this one. And this one requires two columns, the original one and the, or the lookup value and the replacement value. So let's just see how this one looks. Execute. Okay, now this looks good. We have the original one here and the new columns header here. And here in the insert columns header, it has two input ports and the lookup column is basically the column header and the value column with the new column header is this new columns header. So it all the one input port comes from the original table, but this is the table to be changed with these values here from the second column. And if we just execute this, Look how it looks. Now that looks pretty fine. We now have wonderful column headers. We only have the, uh, the um, artist name. We do not have any missing values anymore. So we now can create our line plot. Execute and open views. So now we have our line plot. You see the artist in the legend down below. You see the number of tracks per year. So Let's have a look at the task at hand and see how it was described. Okay, so that was basically the task. Plot the yearly number of tracks by artists in a line plot. That's what we did. Add color for each line, for example, for each artist. Well, check, we've done that. Make the plot subtitle parametric for the selected time window with the help of string manipulation variable node. We have not done this in this one, but let me just refer back to the overall time plot. We already have done it here, right? The plot title is parametric because we have selected 69 to 87 as a year or time range. Then let's just go back here. 
Um, inspect lines one by one and all together. Find out the artists who have been consistently more active across the years of your time window. Well, that's something we probably want to do. Let's just have a look at the line plot. Who? Well, it looks like this artist here, that's Kishore Kumar, has been on a pretty high level. Let's just let's just select him. Oh, can't we select him? Ah, the line plot in. Hmm. The line plot in, in Nime is always kind of a little bit strange because later on when we look at the stacked area chart, there I can simply select data points. But for the line plot, it's not possible, which is a little bit of a pity. You also see some artists have peaks, right? Um, but then again, years where they do zero. So um, maybe the most prolific one is really here Kishore Kumar. Um at least of how it how it looks like. All right. So let's just look at the task. Let's see. Next one is plot the yearly number day 49. Plot the yearly number of tracks by artists in a stacked area chart. Add color for each area, for example, for each artist. Make the plot subtitle parametric for the selected time window. Explore interactivity, especially how to add and remove areas for artists. All right, so plot yearly number of tracks by artist in a stacked area chart. All we had to do is basically to that corrected table, because at the end of the day, it's exactly the same information. We just added a stacked area chart. And this is how it looks like in our component. So that's the stacked area chart. And I was, that's, that's an interesting chart. So I'm not sure if I would do it for a use case like this. Just imagine you have 15, 20 or 50, top 50 um, artists. That gets confusing. It's really, really hard to read the information. What's the data story? And I feel with this task a little bit that um, they do not eat their own dog food because we remember that excellent article that we have covered before, which spoke about how do you create good dashboards? Well, this chart is nice from a technical perspective, but it's not a good it's not a good dashboard component from my point of view. Too way too much information, and you already see how confusing and um, yeah, how how mixed up it already is for the um, for only ten artists. Now imagine if you had even more. But nevertheless, we have done the task. We have the stacked area chart. That's one thing. Let's just quickly look here. Add color for each area, for, for example, for each artist. We have done that. Make the plot subtitle parametric for the selected time window. Well, we definitely have done this because we just took the parametrized um, flow variable that holds our subtitle, um, which we already used uh, way above here in the, um, in the data table that we have created. So we have this one. Now let's have a look what else is there. Explore interactivity, especially how to add and remove areas for artists. And this, once again, as much as I was criticizing, this is just brilliant how Naim deals with this because you can do quite a few things. You might remember that I'm a big Queen fan. Maybe I only want to see Queen. Now I've disabled them, but I could select them here in the chart. And now I see the details for Queen. And that also makes sense. Queen's founding happened in 1972, so no songs before that. They were a little bit um, unproductive in the early 80s. And if you have seen the great movie um, Bohemian Rhapsody, you might remember that was the time when Freddie Mercury thought he probably might want to go solo. Um, yeah, and um, this this is, is very interesting. And... Um, so if we just click back here on the chart, we get back to the main area. Let's just look at the other artists we just, that's Fleetwood Mac, right? So let's just click on this one again and let's look at Kishore Kumar. So he has been consistently, and here is uh, um, pro more productive than the others. And this basically resembles the same information than the line chart, just in a better way. So that is the interactivity. 
Well, I guess this sums up pretty much what I wanted to show you. Basically, if you want to get your hands on these downloads, you can for free. Just go here to the Nime Hub. You will find um, my page uh, over at hub.nime.com slash Kovisoft. That's K-O-W-I-S-O-F-T. And let me just quickly show you um, how you get there and how it looks. So you just go here, hub.nime.com slash Kovisoft. And you land here. You click on public. You click on 66 days of data. And here you have all the stuff. So here is, you can download it here, simply dragging, dropping that little yellow icon onto your um, NIME application already would do the work. All right, so tomorrow we are going to explore um, a bar chart to inspect the evolution over time. And we are also going to look a little bit about JavaScript, but not too much. And that will then conclude our, I would say, somewhat difficult tasks in time series before in the next chapter we're going once again into plots and charts but give more control through the component if you like this make sure to hit like and subscribe and share these videos wherever you watch them so see you tomorrow in 66 days of data with nine take care and bye bye